Hi, I'm Phil Busey. Let's find out how to collect and press an herbarium specimen. Let's start with this cocoa plum plant here and let's make sure that we have enough material to basically fill an herbarium page. There are no flowers or fruits unfortunately at this moment so we'll take what we can get showing some of the younger tissue and some of the older tissue and I'll try to get a good piece of this here. Okay, and then I'll also take a sample of the Persea Bourbonia. This is the plant that you see here that's very fragrant with some of these insect galls. Be a very interesting plant to have a specimen of this. Again, I want to take as much material as I can without doing too much damage to the plant. So I'm going to try to make a nice cut there that hopefully won't be too noticeable. So come with me and we'll go ahead and press these specimens. Hi, I'm back. Uh, I got some herbarium specimens and fortunately I had an opaque bag to put them in so that the sun wasn't going to dry them out. Of course, we don't have that problem now. We have really more of a problem in trying to get these plants pressed quickly enough before it rains and this operation may have to go indoors. Typical herbarium specimens are about 11 and a half by 16 and a half inches. Uh, most modern newspapers don't come in that um, particular size, but I'm going to go ahead and label these really quick. And this is the first specimen. This is the uh, cocoa plum. And I'm going to write today's date, which is 3-29-2014. My name, Phil Busey, and where I found these, which was the South New River Canal. And this will do for now. And when I go back to my um, log book, I'll be able to put each one of these in. And uh, to make a specimen, you really want it to fill the page. And that means sometimes pressing it down like this, folding it over, and there we go. That's plant number one. And for plant number two, I'm going to basically do the same thing. And uh, some of the leaves are going to be pr up right, some are going to be down. And then I can use another piece of cardboard to put on top of that. And I think we have time before the rain. So I'm going to make a couple more cardboards to fit. Not exactly fancy, but it'll do. Uh, okay we kind of make a stack like that Get some more newspapers. Don't forget to write down what you're doing. And uh, again, this was Persea, Borbonia, today's date, 329, 2014. My name is Phil Busey, and the location is South New River. Canal. Okay, put that one in here and it fits just fine. I probably could have gotten more material of this and um, looks like the rain is going to give us a break. And here this cocoa plum we've got a little bit more material after we get these dried out, we'll get, get it straightened out what goes where. And um, there, I've got a little stack. And we'll take this inside, and I'm going to put some books on top of it. Maybe set up a fan, let those um, corrugations transmit the air to help dry out the stack. Hello again. Let's see how those herbarium specimens turned out.
Let's look at the herbarium specimens and see how they came out. Let me first remind you that any good collector maintains a record book, which is a log of the collections that were obtained. And this will be a central reference if there's ever any question. For example, the specimens that were collected the other day are numbered sequentially by my numerical system, 25, 28, 25, 29, with descriptive and location information and the date of collection. This information will appear on the herbarium specimen labels. Here is an example of an herbarium specimen label with all the critical information for someone to go back to the same spot or do geographic studies of this particular plant species, Chrysobalanus e cacao. The plant itself, as it's been preserved, has been protected from leaf defoliation caused by mold. It's been dried quickly. The other plant came out just as nicely. The other plant, which is Persea corbonia, even shows the insect galls. I made a note in the label of the insect galls on the leaf, just in case this particular feature isn't present on every specimen. So that's good. If you want to find a way to quickly do a bunch of labels, I have a template on the web at philbusey.com slash herbarium. And this is a PDF file in which you can just put your name once and it will fill all the labels. You could put a, a sequential number such as number one and then all the other numbers uh, will follow. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. You can put the location, the plant uh, habitat and description and it's all right there. If you want to put the family and species, that's good too. So that's available at philbuc.com slash herbarium. Thank you for discussing how to do a good herbarium specimen.